back to the Week in Review. You know, there's more than the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. That's all you hear about in our country. We say we're a two-party system. Well, we're not. We have many other parties, but they don't get free airtime. They don't get any credibility from anybody because we think we're just Democrats or Republicans. Many places on the planet, they have a lot of parties involved in the political process, and people all participate because every point of view is out there in these different parties. Well, we here at Adelphia believe all parties should be on a level playing field. Joining me right now is Peter Miguel Camejo, who's a candidate for California governor of the Green Party. Thank Good you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Well, Green Party, we know Republicans and Democrats. What's the Green Party? Green Party is the party that is trying to represent the people of California as opposed to like the last guest you had who represents the business community. They represent money. They represent the corporations. We don't accept money from corporations. And right now in the polls, I'm at 5%. And I consider that terrific because I figure about 10% of the people know I'm running, so that's about 50%. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Saying say that, let, let, let me ask you two big questions. One, what are the major differences on the major issues between you and, and the Democrat and the Republican? And secondly, people say, well, if I vote for you, I throw my vote away. Help me on both those questions. <laughs> okay, let's start with the issues, issues and then we'll talk please. about the issue of uh, how the electoral system is set up to deny the voters the right to vote sure. for everybody uh, who they really want. Let's look at some of the key issues. We're, we're we're now running short about 150,000 houses per year. We're creating an absolute crisis in housing affordable short, housing. Yes. Absolutely. What do you do about we, it? Well, we, we have to have programs to start building them. We have to, the tax credit we're using, we're using it incorrectly. We need to really look at this issue. And I want to also go further than that. I want to do what New Zealand did. I want to help people who don't have the money for the down payment to become a first-time homeowner, mm. to have a special program from the state. The way New Zealand did it, they got 98% home ownership. And we could do that, and that's especially important for the Latino community. Uh, I, as a Latino, I feel really strongly about this. They never can get up enough money to make that down payment. They never become homeowners. This is one cry. Living wage. Our minimum wage is lower than it was in 1968. Very important. Uh, on energy, you know, I could go on and about this, but we've got to go to renewable. How much should a living wage be? Ten fifty. Where, uh, that's where the government subsidy ends. Okay. In other words, we should not have government subsidizing businesses because they're not paying people enough. Okay. Energy. Energy. We got to go to renewable energy. Absolutely must. And today, it's cost effective. It is a myth that natural gas is the cheapest because people are not putting the present value on the cost that it's creating in the future. The death penalty. And the death penalty, and three strikes, um, get rational on these issues. We're the only advanced industrial nation in the world with a death penalty. War on drugs. The policy of the Democrats and Republicans is dead wrong. They go after ending supply when the issue is ending demand if you want to end drug addiction. One of the things we should do immediately in California is decriminalize marijuana and become an immediate tax source. Instead of us wasting billions of dollars to put people in jail for marijuana, we, the state couldn't be receiving to help this deficit issue billions of dollars by decriminalizing it and taxing it. Instead, what we do is support tobacco, subsidize it. It kills 450,000 people a year. Marijuana kills no one. The Democrats and Republicans got it all upside down, and you cannot end drug addiction by bombing Colombia, throwing pesticides to Colombia. You have to end demand, and that's a process of education. It's a complex process, but that's where it should start. Okay, before the panel jumps in, I, I want our viewers to also know that uh, besides the Democrat and Republican and the Green Party on the ballot, there are other parties. We're going to look at a list of the candidates that we can decide between on November the 5th, uh, and they are for Governor Gray Davis, who's the governor of the state. He's a Democrat. Bill Simon, who's a businessman and a charity director. He's a Republican. Reinhold uh, Gulke, who's an elected electrical contractor farmer from the American Independent, and Peter sitting right here from the Green Party, uh, and then Gary uh, David uh, Copeland, who's from the Libertarian, who's a chief executive officer, and Iris Adams, who's a business analyst from the Natural Law. So we do have choices on that ballot uh, besides the Democrat and Republican. Bob? Peter, when you ran this March, you received 36,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Ray Davis had two opponents running the Democratic primary who got 139,000 votes, mm -hmm. 170, I don't even know who their names mm -hmm. are. In 1980, 1998, Dan Hamburg ran as a Green Party candidate. He was former congressman, former legislator. Mm -hmm. He got 1% of the vote. 1.8. 1.2, I think. The highest Green Party candidate got 3% mm -hmm. of the vote. Some people say, why should we take the Green Party seriously? Why should mm -hmm. Bill have the Green Party on his programs when you get such few percentages of votes? Okay. Well, first of all, in the primary, only register Greens. And watching green primaries is like watching pink dry. Uh, I was unopposed. And so most people who support us, our vote is always dramatically above the registered number of greens. And don't forget that we, like for instance in San Francisco, our supervisor got 68% of the vote. Two-thirds of the people voted for the green. In the city of Oakland, 
43% vote for our citywide candidate, Green. Well, no, those, are non, those are nonpartisan races. But, but wait a second. But my point I want to make to you is everywhere the Greens are getting very large votes, but we don't get it at the state level. Why? Because right. we don't have runoffs. It's just like the polls showed. Five million people who wanted to vote for Nader didn't vote for him because they aren't given the right to vote for him because there's no runoffs. And we just got IRV, instantaneous runoff voting, passed in San Francisco by a majority. How does 56. that work? That means people vote for who they really want. They vote their first choice, and then if their first choice doesn't make it, they get to pick. It's as simple as one, two, three. You put your first choice in your second choice. And therefore, if your first choice doesn't make it, you vote for your second so choice. you're not throwing your vote away. You're not throwing you're your voting away. You're getting to make the decision decision on who should be, if, if your candidate doesn't do well, but what would really happen, and the reason the Democrats are petrified and the Republicans to allow this, is that you would see the real strength that the Green Party has. People would start listening to these alternatives, not just the Green Party, they would listen to other people too, which is important. My guess is that you will do much better than the 1%, because... Well, I'm 5% in the poll right well, now. Well, yeah, because Gray Davis is such a moderate Democrat, many liberals probably will vote for you, and the we don't have instant runoff, and the question then is, are they wasting their vote, and, and are they electing Bill Simons? Right. What? So this is, this yes. is my problem. Sure. I absolutely agree with you on all the issues, and I really appreciate that you're you running You agree on all the issues. All of the issues. But, and you, I, will not you, vote for, <laughs> but you won't vote for the candidate who you agree with. Don't you believe, then, that there's something wrong with our electoral system? I do believe there are several things wrong with our okay. electoral system. Good. However, we have the system that we have, and if <laughs> Bill Simon does unleash the kind of millions of dollars that we expect yeah. him to be unleashing on a campaign, on yeah. a negative campaign against Davis, yes. um, and Davis' uh, negatives continue to rise, that may be a t much tighter race than I think anybody is really expecting. Look, so they, that would that yeah. would put me in a position then of a vote for you would actually be a vote for Bill Simon. How do I you know reconcile that? Okay. Well, they let uh, the wrestler in the debate and he became the governor. Okay. <laughs> Jesse Ventura. And, right. He's and not so, running again. So <laughs> if if I were in the debates, if there were debates, because I believe Davis is going to try not to have a debate, but he can't quite say he's not having debates because it's it's too extreme. Actually. Bill Simon thinks I'm taking votes away from him. That's what his people have told me. The point is that people should vote who they're for, and it should not have the effect of that the will of the electorate is not correctly expressed. Like we have President Bush, when the will of the electorate in Florida was clearly, un obviously, and no one challenges it, that the majority of the people in Florida, if you had had a runoff, would have voted for Gore, because Nader's 100,000 votes would have won their overwhelming majority for Gore. So the people wanted Gore, and we end up with Bush. And the fact that the Democrats and Republicans <coughs> refuse to correct that should be reason enough for you to always vote against them. Uh, but, because uh, they don't believe in free elections. Uh, They're but, opposed to it. But that doesn't put me in a position of having any kind of influence within the government if oh, I don't want the Republicans If in. our vote, if the Green Party vote goes up strongly, <coughs> that will have more impact to protect the environment, the economy, for social justice, for housing, for ending racism, than anything else that happens. Whether Bill Simon or Davis gets in is not the key issue. The key issue is whether the American people get involved in politics, stand up and say, we want free elections, we want democracy, we want these issues. Then why not start at a local level where you can have you more do. impact? We are starting at a local level. We, are, we have now candidates elected all up and down the state, and I expect this year we may finally have a couple of people get into the state legislature that will stay green, but hey, we're, we're yeah, working I mean, on we that. Saw, we saw the first green legislator represented who er, elected I from know, San Francisco area. I know, we made area. a mistake, yes. Well, she found that she was, you know, ostracized and wasn't able to get the kind of work no, she, done that you wanted to happen, and that's why she. Jumped. I don't want to deal with this. She's a really nice person. She actually worked for me at one point, so I don't. I don't want to Joe, deal with that. Yeah, I. I, I want to ask a, a more. You know, I welcome your your uh, being on this ballot. I like like Bill. The more candidates, more democracy. Let okay. let the ideas flow. Let people vote. And I agree. People should vote for who they think. Will uh, will represent their ideas, which is why I just think the whole discussion of Nader was totally outrageous, you know. But here, here's you know, I've, I've watched these kind of elections, and I'm an old guy from the left before I decided uh, to do different kinds of things, and I've watched the left every year, going back to Gus Hall and the Communist Party would run Gus every year, and he'd get uh, what 13 votes nationally, some ridiculous thing. The SWP used to uh, run candidates uh, traditionally for these for these, uh, and now. The Green Party seems to have uh, uh, now represents that slot. And some of the, the ideas that the party seems to represent, uh, government subsidy for home ownership, one of the traditional ways Americans get a foot up and Absolutely. finally join the mainstream is, is home ownership, yes. to somehow su suggest that uh, the government has a role in subsidizing <laughs> your and my decision to join the American uh, dream in that way. I, I wonder how that resonates with voters. And I guess the question I'm asking is, do you think some of these ideas have been historically rejected in a, in a broader way mm -hmm. will be now embraced via the electoral process? 
Well, let me get back to this. It's not a question of subsidy. It's giving people an opportunity. African Americans and Latinos have been denied opportunity in this nation. The Look, start, for, largest for, growth in home ownership for, is, is from the Latino community. Right, the from, starting from a very low level, starting to come up. But look, for 90 years, the Democrats and Republicans denied, in violation of the Constitution, the right of African Americans to vote. They've never apologized for it. And, and so no, but have, what's that got to do with what I'm asking? What I'm saying is that there's been a denial. There has been an open denial of rights in the history of this country. And so for me to come up with a proposal, it's not because I'm trying to subsidize people to do it's to give people an opportunity to become part and have the same advantages that other people have in this but, society. But the direct question I'm asking you, left yes. views have well, been directed look, uh, at the ballot okay. box. How now do look, you think they'll embrace the, the those Green, now? The Green Party is a, a, a very different phenomena than some of the things you refer to. And the Green Party is the fastest growing party. It's the only party whose registration is growing in the state of California. It is rapidly gaining throughout the United States and in part because the <clears throat> Democratic Party is betraying its traditional base. Today, the Latinos who are elected in the state legislature have not endorsed Davis, large numbers of them. Everywhere I'm going, especially in the Latino and African American community, there is disgust and anger over this incredible dysfunctional government that we now have right now in Sacramento, the disaster in energy. You just had someone on here get up and say that we had large demand and that's why we had shortages. We were using 30% less energy when we had the blackouts than <coughs> only three months earlier. So this is a man who doesn't know the basic issue, who was up here, that's a Republican, who are running, the Democrats and Republicans are running 14 men for the seven positions. They don't even have a single woman on their slate. They show such running seven white men representing 22.5% of our population. The only the Green Party's running three women on its slate, half the slate, and it's running an African-American woman and a Latino. I mean, who is, what these people look like, the Democrats and Republicans, is, is a typical corporate board. Remember, though, the voters voted for these people. I mean, March Fong. Yeah, well, March they don't Fong, know of anybody March Fong, else. But March Fong if it you, weren't for Bill, March, they, nobody would know March, about it. March about Fong, it. you and, yes. and, and, uh, and Ali Odo ran against you for Secretary of State, and the <laughs> voters the picked Kevin Yeah, before we take a break. Well, basically, what you're saying is that they should have the right to be able to make these decisions. But the truth is, is that as there is more diversity, for instance, in the Democratic Party, not necessarily supporting Davis, that's a healthy thing. People should be <laughs> making their decisions based upon their best judgment and not upon any loyalty to a party. It should be loyalty to themselves and their own confidence in themselves, which means that you're building more democratic skills within the society as a whole. The reason that Latinos are hostile towards Davis is because what you Democrats and Republicans are doing is criminalizing poverty. You say you have to have car insurance, but you don't give them a way to have it. So we got seven million people driving around illegally. You bring in people from Mexico to work here. You know where they are. Everybody knows. You call them illegals, and then you won't give them the right to even have a driver's license and be able to drive to work. That's why the community is angry. That's why they the Latino community. They have all the rights of a free society, and they can exercise <laughs> those rights true. in the process. That's yes, a, it is. That's okay. a myth. All right, we're going to take a break, uh, but we're going to do our part for you, Peter. We'll, okay. we'll do a half hour one-on-one. -on -one. We'll run it up and down Great. the stake, give you free air time on that, uh, and we'd like to invite you to do a debate. Will you debate your opponents here? Yes, I'm scheduled on September 22nd to have a debate with Davis and Simon. I will be uh, July 12th on the same platform with Simon. Uh, I will, uh, if they continue to agree, and well, of course we haven't got a yes from Davis. We have a yes from Simon. Uh, and, I'm, and I want to congratulate him for that because I think it's the first uh, uh, of the two parties that has agreed to include the Green in the debates, and he deserves credit for that. Okay, well, thank you very much for thank coming you. on the show. Best okay. of luck in your campaign. All right, thank Appreciate you. you coming. Viewers, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back.